All right, welcome back everyone to Digital Dreambox. Today we're going to learn how we can make a lit sign in Maya using Maya's mesh light. Uh, it's gonna be an IMAX sign, so it should be a lot of fun. Let's jump right in and check this one out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab an HDRI from Polyhaven. So Polyhaven is a website that offers a bunch of free assets, one of them being HDRIs and we're going to use it later to help light our scene. So go to polyhaven.com, hover over assets, choose HDRIs, and the one I'm going to use is called Cinema Lobby. So you can search cinema, and this is the one I downloaded earlier. However, you can you know, choose whatever one you like, um, but this is the one I'll be using, and we'll be using this later to help light our scene. So in front of me right now, I have several images of lit IMAX signs. And if you take a look, you can see that it comes in more than one color style. So we have the red one, the blue one, we have some backlit versions, and I've also seen a white one as well. And this is the font that it's using. It's called Micro Gamma Bold Extended. So if you do a Google search for that, you'll find several websites that offer a free version of that for personal use. I've already downloaded and installed it. And if you need some help downloading or installing fonts, I do have a tutorial on um, how to install fonts onto Windows PCs, um, and I'll post a link down below for that. All right, um, let's get started. I'm gonna make this um, IMAX sign, but you can make whatever lit sign you want, really. So in my Maya scene right now, I've prepped it up a little bit. I have a cube that represents a wall and a plane that's a floor, and I've pinned my Arnold render view on top of the outliner over here, just so that we can preview it easily. Uh, the Arnold render view, it's up here. Um, or in your Arnold tab, it's right here. All right, and let's um, let's make our sign. So I'm gonna select both of these objects, press H on the keyboard to hide it, and I'm gonna go up to the T here. This is the type tool. I also have a tutorial how to use this if you wanna explore it further, but it's pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna add some text to the scene, go to this type one tab, I'm gonna change this to say IMAX. There we go. And because I already installed my font, I can use this drop down and find Marco Gamma. There we go. And now we have that IMAX font. Um, now, Maya does a pretty good job of converting the font to a 3D mesh. However, uh, depending on its import settings, right, it may run into issues. So, right now, you can see these two letters are clipping. So, let's create a little bit of space there for at least on my font. I'm going to go down to this Type Manipulator tool. First, let me center the font. There we go. I'm going to go down here to the Type Manipulator, enable that. I'm going to click on the X here, and then I'm going to just give it a bit of space similar to that other letter. There we go. Maybe a little bit less. There we go. And then I'll disable that. And rather than changing the font size here later on, I'll use the scale tool um, over here, just because um, this font size slider can affect the spacing of the fonts over here. Let me just show you. As I drag this down, you can see now I have more space here, less over here. Just gonna undo that. Um, so what we're gonna do is next, let's go to geometry. I want to lower the divisions over here. So down here we have something called extrusion. Gonna lower the divisions down to one, I don't need them. And then we're gonna be rendering this uh, mesh later. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable deformable type because uh, we have some n-gons at the front here which can cause some issues with rendering sometimes. So I'm just gonna play it safe. Really depends on the font and the letters, but I'm gonna enable this. It's going to triangulate our mesh. And then I want to optimize those points a little bit. So I'm gonna play with some of these sliders, dragging down the max edge divisions and increasing these two sliders over here. That'll reduce the triangle count. All right, looks pretty good. And then I want to um, reduce the depth of my um, mesh. So I'm going to go over here to extrude distance and lower this to about, let's go with 1.2. Sure. All right. So now it looks something like that. And now I can, I'm ready to scale down this uh, mesh. Uh, let's bring in our floor and our wall so we can size it up. So I'm gonna select both of these uh, objects over here, press H to unhide it. Then I'm gonna select this one, bring it up to about here, scale it down, um, maybe a bit more. 
and I'm just going to push it in closer to over here. Just in front of it, just a little bit. There we go. And then uh, let's give these some new materials as well. So uh, right now this is using a blend shader. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button. We're going to give it the uh, Arnold shader AI standard surface. So go down here, assign new material. And then we can choose Arnold. And this is the very popular AI standard surface shader. And there we go. All right, let's rename it as well. Um, if it doesn't take you to the shader over here, just hold down the right mouse button and go to material attributes and it should take you there. But I'm just going to rename this to say M underscore sign lit. Let's rename our mesh as well. So down here, I'm going to double click it. I'm going to call this, um, let's call this IMAX sign lit. Go, I'm just going to drag this up a little bit. Um, and then let's give a material to the floor and the wall as well. I'm going to give it the same material. So I'm going to select both of them. Same thing, hold down the right mouse button, assign new material, Arnold, um, AI standard surface, and there we go. And this one, I'm just going to lower this uh, gray value a little bit. The value. <laughs> All right, so now, um, say 0 0.25, 0 0.25 works. All right, so now let's um, add a light to our scene because if we try and render this right now, um, we're not going to get anything. So let me just show you. So let me just close that up, pull this over. And whenever you resize this, you'll probably want to press F to reframe that. So if I hit play right now, you can see, you know, we're not seeing anything. So I'm just going to stop this for now. Um, let's add um, a sky dome light to our scene and then we can connect that HDRI. So to add your sky dome light, go to your Arnold shelf. It's the fourth icon over, so this globe here. And then now if we hit play, you'll see Right away, we can see stuff in our scene. Um, I'm going to open up the attribute editor, so make sure your sky dome light selected. Right now, it's using this white color to basically light our scene, which, you know, works, but it's not very interesting. So let's go to the checkerboard here, click on this. This will allow us to create a render node. And what we're looking for is this file type. And then over here, click on the folder, and you'll need to navigate to where you saved your EXR file. So that's the cinema lobby that I downloaded or whatever HDRI you decided on. I'm gonna select it and click open. And if you still have the play button on, you'll use that to light your scene. So that's awesome. And then, um, so that's great, but I don't want it to um, be visible in my viewport. So I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna hide it in the viewport. And to do that, we're gonna go down here, go to viewport, and we can set the sky radius to zero, which will hide it in the viewport, but it'll still use that background to light our scene. So I'm gonna do zero, and there we go, it's hidden for us. And if you ever wanna hide it in the render view as well, just set your camera um, setting here, value to zero, and it'll hide it in there. But I'll leave it at one, that's fine. And then you can see over here, it's a bit noisy, right? So I'm going to uh, add a denoiser, there's a cog wheel here. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna add imager. And if you have an NVIDIA, NVIDIA card, uh, you can use the optics denoiser, or you may need to use one of the other ones, but I'm gonna use the optics denoiser and that'll smooth out our render. All right, awesome. Now um, let's give our sign a bit of color. So I'm gonna select it. And to get to the material attributes, we can hold down the right mouse button, choose material attributes, or, you know, you can mouse wheel all the way down here to the end, get to it, or you can also right click here and go to the very bottom, which will be your material. And then we can go over here, we can you know, give it any color we want, you know, blue, reddish, something like that. Or if you want a color that's close to the IMAX color, you can also sample it. So I'm just gonna minimize this so I can show you guys. Bring this over here going to bring back our images. Just going to double click this to expand it. And over here where the color is, let's open that up. And there's a color picker right here. And we can sample one of these colors if we want. So I'm going to pick uh, this one up here. And there you go. And then I'll just minimize this again. 
So yeah, so that'll give you a color kind of like within that range, that hue range. And then you can always uh, play with the uh, saturation and bring it up a little bit before you light it. But I'll, I'll leave that right there. Um, so right now uh, we have a color for it, but it's not lit. So we're gonna be using Maya's mesh light. So to uh, create a mesh light from this mesh, we're gonna select this mesh. And then we're gonna go up to our Arnold shelf. The second icon over will create a mesh light from it. So let's click on it. And nothing has happened yet. Um, there's actually no light because we have no exposure. So first let's, um, let's dim our background a little bit. So I'm gonna choose the sky dome light. And up here, for the intensity, I'm gonna make this like a 0.1. There you go, that'll darken our scene. And uh, let's now go to our mesh light. So you can select it over here or where your mesh is, open that up. So we have an object parent parented to it and that's our mesh light. And we can increase this exposure. If I drag the slider, you can see uh, it goes up to five. We can input a higher value later, but for now, you can see that it looks like we can see our light, but really it's just casting the light onto this object. So if I move it back a little bit, you can see um, that's what's happening. Just gonna undo that. So bring it back over here. So let's um, select it. And first thing I'd like to do is um, change the color. So I'm gonna go in here and choose the color that we picked, right? Which is this one. So that looks pretty good. And if you wanna make your light visible, there is an option here, but um, we're not gonna use it because I'm not a big fan of this, but if you click on this, that'll make your light visible, right? And if we increase this, this exposure, so let me just type in like a, something like a value of 10, right? You can see now we can see this. However, if you take a look, we're getting a very flat lighting here, right? We're not seeing any detail in this mesh. So that's one of the reasons I don't wanna use it. We're not really getting that incandescent effect. So we're gonna do a different method, but for now, I just wanted to show you that if we were to increase this exposure also until this kind of looks bright, um, our scene, um, our render gets overexposed as well. So that's another issue. I'm just gonna bring this back down to like something more reasonable for now. Uh, what we're gonna do is just disable this. We're gonna show the original mesh and then what we're going to do is we're gonna give it a bit of a mission. So to do that, we're gonna select the mesh itself, so that mesh object. Let's go to the material attributes, so down here. And then down here we have emission. We're actually going to turn this on, so let's give it a value of one for now. And then for the color, we'll just choose that red that we chose earlier. So now we have this kind of IMAXy sign, that's nice, and then we could even add a higher value here if we want. So if we want, we can type in something crazy like five and that'll make it a little bit hotter. And then we can, you know, go in here, play with some of these, um, change the color if we want. Um, one more thing we will probably want to do is go down here under advanced. Right here for the indirect diffuse, it's recommended that we just bring this down because it's not going to really change it too much. However, it'll save on the, it'll be less expensive for the, the render. All right. So now um, let's close that up. And I'm gonna bring this back down to something a little more reasonable. And that's pretty nice. You know, we can bring this back down to something that works a bit better. So now we have this, you know, feels like an IMAX sign, but um, I'm gonna go with, instead of red, I'm gonna go with blue. So over here for the color, uh, for the color, I'm gonna go with um, a full saturation and a value of 215. There we go. And then up here for our base color, same thing, I'm gonna change this to the blue. Uh, for the weight, I'm gonna bring this, we'll, we'll adjust the weight a bit more for now, I'll just leave it at 0.8, that's fine. And then let's work with the exposure. So we're gonna go to the mesh light, and over here the intensity is um, one still, that's fine. For the exposure, I'm gonna bring this back down and also let's change it to that blue color. So the exposure, I'm gonna go with somewhere between, probably, let's take a look here. Um, before we do anything else, actually, um, I'm gonna turn this more of a backlight um, and then we can play with the exposure and the emission a little more if we want. So I, I like the look of the, the backlight, right? So I'm gonna select this. 
Um, I'm going to control D to duplicate it. And then over here, let me just move it forward a little bit. I don't need the mesh light that's been created from it. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm also going to rename this to say sign front. And then let's give this a new material. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, assign new material, Arnold AI standard surface. And for this one, um, I think 0.8 is fine for this value. I might make the roughness maybe a little bit less. So something like that. And then we want to push this uh, in front of the other one. So something here is fine. All right. And then actually before I push it in there, I'm going to scale it in. So probably to something like there, it works for me. And let's take a look now. And I think that looks pretty good. We have this um, blue IMAX sign, which I like both of them. It kind of depends on my mood. We have this blue IMAX sign. And then let's position the camera. Um, also, let me just frame in, right, um, for a render. So I think that looks pretty good. And now we'll need to play with the exposure because that's probably a little bit strong, right? So let's go into our mesh light. Let me lower this to like a six. Looks pretty good. And then uh, let's figure out how we want how dark we want the background to be. So I might make a I might make a render that's darker and lighter and, and then show you. But for now, let I'm gonna go with the darker background. So I'm gonna go to the sky dome light. Right now it's 0.1. And 0.1 feels alright. Let me just see what it looks like a little bit lighter. Yeah, I may try both actually, but for now I'll leave it at 0.1. And then um, let's increase the the resolution. So let me show you that. I'm going to stop this render for a second. I also want to up my sample. So I'm going to select the mesh light over here. I'm going to increase the samples to about four. I'm going to select the sky dome light and also increase the samples just so we can get a better read of what it will eventually look like. And then up here um, under the render settings, in the render settings, um, in the Arnold renderer, I'm going to increase the camera anti-aliasing samples to about four for now. I'll increase it more later for the final render, but four should be fine for now. Actually, no, I'll make it five. And then under common, I'm going to make this a 1080p render so we can take a look at it. Um, there we go. Close this up and then I'll hit play, frame in, and this may take a minute or two, and then I'll fast forward if it takes too long. Okay, so our 1080p render finished, and now we want, we can work on the lighting some more, maybe make a few tweaks, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably change the angle and then up the samples and make a 4K render, and then we can take a look at it. Okay, so I've made a few minor tweaks and changed up the background, and these are the final renders. One is in a lit room, and one is in a darkened room. That's it for this tutorial. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. And we will see you all in the next one. See you all then.